Hi, in the episode number 18, we are going to receive Jorge Chacon to discuss about the Brazilian experience on the Bullboard Disease Control. Enjoy! Hi, dear poultry industry friends. We are to connected today with Brazil to receive in Tanino of Experts Jorge Chacon, that's the Vet Service Manager uh, in, in Brazil for poultry, for poultry business there with a really large experience controlling disease and different areas of knowledge regarding poultry. So, uh, and he's going to be today with us to share all his knowledge that I'm talking about and his experience in the boom board control. So, welcome, Jorge. Uh, thanks to in, in accept our invitation to be here with us and to share your experience with us. Thank you, Marco, for the opportunity to share with colleagues around the world or the Brazilian experience to control Gumboro disease. So, uh, Jorge, I know that uh, in Brazil, there's the Siva vet services team monitor and do, do a lot of uh, collection, do a lot of monitoring of several diseases in our customers. And my, my first question for you is going to be, can you explain to us how you monitor the disease in Brazil and what kind of samples are you collecting? Yes, um, the monitoring design depends on many factors related uh, mainly to the vaccination schedule and the productive and sanitary status of the broiler company, for example. We consider the number of vaccination programs used simultaneously in the company. Uh, we also consider how long the current vaccination program is used for the broiler company. And of course, the productive and sanitary status of the flocks. With, that, with this information, we defined with a, together with the customer the number of flocks to be monitored we select the flocks to include in the evaluation. And normally for Gumboro, we collected bursa uh, for histopathology and molecular analysis around the 30 and 35 days of age. Um, blood sampling uh, at the slaughterhouse time. In general, uh, Gumboro is a uh, under control disease here in Brazil with very few, few outbreaks of clinical diseases. However, the subclinical form of the disease is common in some situations. Uh, it's, it's important to remember that uh, during the 90s, Brazil has uh, many, many cases of very virulent gumboro. Nowadays, it's rare to see clinical disease in flux receiving immunocomplex vaccine. Okay, and you you describe it to us a little bit about the how you monitor the samples that you collect, correct? And even that in the past, some some outbreaks was more frequent than today. Can you, if all these results are obtained, can you describe to us a little bit along the time how was the evolution of the bullboard disease? As mentioned, it and uh, at the nineties we had uh, the presence of very virulent. Uh, strain uh, affecting broilers and layers farms in here in Brazil, causing uh, more than 30% of mortality. Uh, the inclusion of, of uh, strains uh, like Winterfield, first in the drinking water vaccination route, uh, was uh, the first step to control. Uh, but uh, Next years, we noticed that the problems continues, uh, especially because problems with the application. So, with the introduction of hatchery vaccines like Transmune, uh, the control were most effective because many mistakes that happened in the field uh, were solved with the vaccination in the hatchery. Uh, I, I would like to to. Uh, that uh, 
with the introduction of stress moon, uh, many advantages were observed uh, in the field. Uh, the first of that, as I mentioned, it was that the transmune eliminate the field vaccination. The drinking water vaccination mistake were solved with the introduction of transmune. Other important benefits of transmune uh, was related its capacity to uh, uh, to take bursa in flux with different levels of maternal antibodies. Uh, with this, uh, in consequence, uh, vaccine uh, transmute can uh, avoid a field virus infection. We, in consequence, there was a clear, clear reduction of the uh, uh, virulent virus circulation in the field. It's uh, absolutely clear the effect uh, of the um, transmute. Uh, to protect the birds, but also to reduce the uh, field virus shedding excretion. Um, that means a reduction of the risk of contamination for the next oncoming flocks of chicks. Jorge, you, you comment before to us about the how you control, how you monitor, how you do the proper diagnosis. Uh, after that, using this proper tool to diagnosis. From your point of view, which are going to be the key factors to control the disease? First, uh, we, we need to, uh, to start with a proper diagnosis. Uh, to diagnose Gumbor is not easy, especially the subclinical form. Uh, so uh, in my understanding, we need to, to use, to implement more than two uh, diagnosis tools. To, to confirm the Gumbor status or in our farms. Uh, the first one is macroscopic evaluation, histopathology, serology, and molecular analysis are also relevant. But the most important is the correct interpretation of the lab results. Uh, the results must be in line with expected for the vaccine type used in the farms. For example, in flocks using vector vaccines, no evidence of viral replication must be found macro and microscopically. Uh, so the first step to control Gumbor is to do the proper diagnosis. So we need to use the, the tools available in our country. After that, we need to select the best option for, for our conditions. Um, in, in Brazil, uh, we have a special situation. Um, the litter is reused for a long time, four to six years. In addition, in many, in many uh, regions, geographical regions, the downtown period is lower than 10 days. So for this uh, situation, vaccines should protect the vaccinated birds, of course, but also reduce the field virus in the litter. Then, if the vaccine reduces the field virus shedding, the next chick flocks will be placed in no and no contaminated litter. So uh, we we said here, a uh, vaccine should protect birds, but also the environment. So, uh, Jorge, considering these factors that we have, short downtime period we have reuse of liters and we need yes as you said not just protect but reduce the risk of the of challenge for the next flocks from from your experience can you share uh, uh, one example of that uh, in the situation you mentioned it um, the unique form to to protect birds and the flocks is to use alive viruses um, the second point is the, the correct moment for virus colonization in Bursa. So in order to achieve both uh, demands, the unique solution is the complex immune vaccine. Because uh, as everybody knows, in immunocomplex vaccine, the virus will be available when the chicken is susceptible to, to, to be uh, uh, infected, the Bursa is infected the virus. So uh, we need uh, to 
apply the vaccine correct, uh, correctly in the in the hatchery, we need a, a good balance uh, immunocomplex vaccine in order to confer safety, but also efficacy, because we need to protect the bursa in the first 10 days of age, but the, the virus has to achieve the bursa before the field virus. Uh, in in um, um, very contaminated litter, it's important to colonize bursa. This is the reason why many uh, vector vaccines cannot avoid the uh, infections of bursa uh, and the flux in consequence will be suffer in subclinical losses. Okay, and, and Jorge, you comment um, about subclinical disease. That's something that we see around the world and more and more common. Uh, most probably is the most common form of disease nowadays. Can you go a little bit deeper and, and, and tell to us how do you see it in Brazil about the subclinical disease? The subclinical form of the Gumboro is also common here in Brazil especially in farms using vector vaccine that cannot avoid bursa infection by field viruses. The big challenge is to uh, measure the economic impact of the subclinical uh, disease uh, that depends on many factors, of course. Large and very well conducted trials show us that flocks with a subclinical IBDB has a productivity rates lower than those now infected. For example, in 2010, the economic impact of subclinical Gumboro disease was estimated at more than seven US dollars per thousand birds. So uh, it is a, a, a number, a, a significant number of losses of the subclinical Gumboro disease in, in the Brazilian conditions. You mentioned that how the disease can impact in the in the performance and even the economical uh, results of the of the poultry production. And in the same time, uh, we know that Transmoon is the most common IBD vaccine used in Brazil. Uh, in most of the most of the broilers in Brazil are vaccinated against Bumbur by Transmoon. Can you share with us what was the contribution of Transmoon on controlling these losses and controlling the disease, not just the clinical but subclinical as well? Transmoon, Transmoon is a leader of, of the market here in Brazil for many many years. Uh, the vaccine was adapted very well in, in different conditions, in different geographical regions. Everybody knows Brazil is a continent and country. The vaccine works very well in different uh, situa geographical uh, conditions, in different uh, uh, types of weather. Um, the benefits are, are totally clear for the customer and for us. Um, as I mentioned, it, uh, one uh, important benefit for the customer was the elimination of the field vaccination. Transmoon eliminate the mistake uh, related to the drinking water vaccination, for example. Uh, other important benefits of trans uh, that Transmoon had brought was the capacity of Transmoon to take bursa of flocks with the different maternal antibody levels. So, uh, Yes, it's important to immunize, immunize the breeders, but doesn't matter the, the level of maternal antibody when we use Tresmoon because the vaccine can adapt very well to different levels of maternal antibodies. And with that, in consequence, there is a clear reduction of the virulent virus circulation in the field. It's very, very uh, uh, uncommon to see um, uh, inefficacy or, or, or no protection in in in, in, in flux vaccinated with Resmoon. I don't remember one case in, in the last 10 years. So to close our really interesting conversation and your sharing your experience in controlling Bumbur disease, uh, I would like to ask you if you if you have any advice for the vets in the field about controlling the Bumbur disease. 
what advice it would be. During monitoring in the field, please check Bursa and analyze the lab results carefully. These findings must be in line with expected ones for the vaccine technology chosen for immunization of the flocks. And remember, the absence of clinical science doesn't mean the absence of subclinical losses. Jorge, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to accept our invitation to connect with us in TANIF Expert and share your knowledge or experience for along the years controlling uh, not just Bumbur disease, but several diseases that uh, you are you are working on. And so thank you for accepting again this invitation and be with us. And I would like to thank you as well to our audience to, to watch one more episode of Tanin with Experts and keep well, keep with us. Thank you for watching this episode. And do not hesitate to give us your feedback by commenting down below in the comment section. Goodbye, stay safe. <music>